Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Secrets of the Sphere. Your source for the true story on all that occurs in the Inner Sphere. As always, I am your host, Kyle Donoto, the Questioner. Tonight's topic, the Proto-Mech Problem. As I am sure you all know, I keep agents throughout the Inner Sphere to gather the unadulterated data for you, and I regularly undertake investigations to follow up on specific areas of interest, such as our recent expose on the House Cameron Air. Tonight, we have an even more exciting story for you as we delve into a follow-up on a series of mysterious disappearances on the planet Wolcott. There are few who do not know of Wolcott, the planet where Ginji no Kanre Theodore Kurita famously handed the clans one of their first major defeats with Operation Sakaku by using clan bidding practices against the clan Smoke Jaguar forces and misleading them about the quality of warriors they would face, Khan Ray Kurita managed to not only defend the planet from invasion, but also successfully win several of their Omnimechs in battle armor, which were examined and reverse-engineered to help reduce the clan's technological advantage. As the clans once again threaten our beloved birth world of Terra. It is only fitting for things to focus on Wolcott again, in one of the places where the clans truly knew defeat. Over the last few months, there have been reports of several colonists on Wolcott going missing, usually late at night with no sign of a struggle. That would not normally be too strange, especially on a planet known for its fog-covered marshes and dense jungles. A couple of key points caught the attention of one of my investigators, whom we will call Cerberus. Firstly, despite its unique nature, Wolcott does not boast a large amount of apex predators. Secondly, following the successful defense of the planet in 3050, the Draconis Combine used Walcott as a staging ground against the encroaching clan forces, staging many raids against Clan Smoke Jaguar as they continued their march towards Terra. Accordingly, Many soldiers put down roots on the planet, finding a higher standard of living there than on the combined planets they had come from. As such, following the truce of Tukian, significant numbers of former combined troops decided to remain on the planet, seeing it as an idyllic place to start their lives when the clan threat abated. These former soldiers are the very types who would be prepared to protect their land against all threats, and the majority that go around armed on a regular basis is significant, especially for a combine world. As a curious fact, a significant number of retired soldiers are among the missing and every person who disappeared owned a registered personal defense weapon, all of which were not found in their homes afterwards, leaning towards the theory that these missing people had been armed when they were taken. No bodies have yet been recovered, although copious amounts of blood have been found in the woodlands surrounding the homesteads, lending further credence to the thought that something attacked from the woods 
in the dead of night. I originally sent Cerberus to investigate the situation based off of several other promising investigations we are running at the same time. Uh, the Minnesota tribe, body snatchers, Bigfoot's recent sightings within the Free Rasselhag Republic, word of Blake cultists seeking to manufacture new Mene Domini by kidnapping former Solaris mech warriors. But what he had found has proven to be even more terrifying. What follows is an excerpt from our recording. I have found something interesting on the Wolcott thing. What do you know about Proto-Mix? Following the clan losses at Tukian, the Smoke Jaguar scientist cast began working on the development of a hybrid between battle armor and a light battle mech, the Proto-Mech. It allows for a new level of combat from a more versatile platform than either elemental battle armor or light Omnimex at that time. Exactly. Unfortunately, the idea never caught on. Protomex were used for the first time on Huntress. <coughs> Please, Kyle, no crazy theories about the Smoke Jaguar still being out there. Fine. Anyway... Most of the other clans would do their own research into the concept following the defeat on Huntress, but eventually the majority would regulate protomechs to niche roles in their tomans. Gotcha. Now, the leading theory for their lack of efficacy was due to their pilots. Most clan warriors, whether elementals, mech warriors, or aerospace pilots, are the product of a very specific phenotype each created over decades through the clan eugenics program to create the most effective warriors possible. Kilogram for kilogram, trueborn warriors are faster, stronger, and better adapted to their chosen form of warfare than their inner sphere counterparts. The theory about why the protomech never caught on was because there was no protomech phenotype made for it. That's what we all believed, myself included. Sounds like you now have cause for doubt. Maybe. I've been tracking down some leads for a while now, specifically while chasing the rumor that Bigfoot once ran for a seat in the Free Worlds League Parliament, and I recently came up with something from a Clan Sea Fox trader that I think you need to see. The following video was acquired in a trial of possession from a former Clan Smoke Jaguar research facility on Huntress. A camera shows a star of Harpy Protomex engaging a Nova Omnimech, moving with the impressive agility of a clan warrior that is one with their machines. The Protomech quickly kneecaps the larger machine and takes it down, beginning to swiftly fire their lasers into the shoulder and knee joints of the Omnimech, allowing it to be salvaged later while ensuring that it is no longer able to fight. Unfortunately, they are unable to disable it before a medium laser shears away a portion of the armor on the protomech's chest plate. Through the darkness of the interior of the suit, the outline of a face, although it is hard to tell if the face is covered in fur or a full beard, but the eye that shines out from within the suit resembles those of a jungle cat, like the smoke jaguars that are the clan's namesake, but clearly more animal than man lit in an eerie neon green by what must be their warrior's enhanced imaging tattoos. The attack sends the protomech warrior into a frenzy, and it leaps on the Nova's chest, tearing at the Omnimech's head with its battle claws. While there is no sound to the recording, it is clear that those watching are trying to summon reinforcements or order the protomechs to stand down. The wounded harpy rips away the Nova's reinforced cockpit glass, and the feed mercifully cuts off as the smoke jaguar mech warrior is torn, bucking and screaming from the cockpit. By the unfinished book! I think it's safe to say we have finally confirmed that the smoke jaguar scientist cast did create a viable proto-mech phenotype. Following the events on that tape, Scientist General Kalban ordered the entire phenotype reeved, all evidence of the program's failure destroyed. Washed-out mech warrior and elemental candidates were given the opportunity to take over the program, but no further members of the proto-mech phenotype were created. I can understand why. 
You think there's some sort of connection between these beasts and the disappearances on Wolcott? I do. A search of the declassified files the Eridani Light Horse recovered on Huntress under the banner of the Second Star League proved to be the key. I found Cobbin's termination order for the phenotype, but no confirmation that it had actually ever been carried out. Eight days after the order was given, a smoke jaguar jump ship, the Jaguar's Pride, was sent down the Jaguar's invasion corridor. So you believe the protomech pilots might have been sent to Wolcott? Yes. From the files, Byesville was the ship's intended destination, a single jump from Wolcott, although we have no confirmation that it ever arrived. Still, I wouldn't put it past the smoke jaguars to find a final use for the protomech warriors. I don't know if the Khan or the scientists who created them would have been behind it, but it seems plausible. Were you able to track down the scientist? No. She went missing approximately same time as the rumored society rebellion, and I had no luck tracking her down from there. This is incredible. There's something else. Now, think about the timeline when they were created. Even with the speed of clan maturation, these creatures, if they exist, would be over a century old. Or worse, they're not. Not the initial creatures, that is. This sounds like something I'm not going to want to hear. I know I didn't. Following this revelation, I expanded my search and found similar disappearances on at least eight planets surrounding Wolcott, not to mention two dozen missing citizens across the planet. Which means... Kyle, from the data I have here, only a single star of the prototypes were ever created. That means either these creatures figured out how to jump ship travel on their own, or there are more of them now. I don't know about you, devoted listeners, but I will be sleeping a little more lightly tonight. Cerberus is back on the case, but until then, keep your doors Locked and your weapons handy, as there is a secret phenotype of clan warriors driven half mad by their creator, and they could be anywhere in the inner sphere. If you have any new leads, send them to our secured space, and we will follow up. What do you think, however? Are the Smoke Jaguar phenotype to blame for the disappearances on Wolcott? Or is there something even more sinister lurking out in the darkness? Tune in next time to hear more about the answers to these pressing questions and more on Secrets of the Sphere. This is your host, Kyle Donoto, reminding you to keep ever vigilant and keep questioning.